Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. This long-awaited video is finally here where I'll be going through all of your questions related to astral projection as well as questions related to spirituality, consciousness and life in general because as you know astral projection is related to all aspects of life and not just some separate thing. And I think a lot of you understand that because a lot of you have asked a lot of very deep and profound questions, which I was quite impressed by. So this should be quite interesting. Um, I will try my best to answer your questions as concisely and informatively as I can. But if you want any elaboration on anything that I say, or you get confused by anything that I say, please don't just, you know, jump to conclusions or misinterpret anything. Uh, please just request some clarification in the comments below, and I will eventually get back to you as I usually do. You know, the more profound a question, usually the more profound an answer that is needed. And if the answer is very short or vague, which I may or may not do because there's so many questions here, um, then it it's easier to misinterpret those questions or, sorry, those answers, right? So, you know, I am going to be blasting through these questions as fast as I can, but I will try to keep my normal level of insight and informativeness for you. Uh, also, the channel is now at 2,000 subscribers. So thank you everyone for, you know, subscribing and leaving your comments. I always love reading your comments who, uh, you know, really appreciate the sort of guidance and information that I'm giving. And there are people who are having astral projection experiences, coming to new and greater realizations in their life. And I'm very grateful that this is becoming a helpful resource for so many of you. You know, you can see here now, uh, there are a lot of videos being made. Um, we have a nice collection already, uh, but I still feel we are just touching at the surface layer of all these subjects. So please do expect a lot more in-depth videos with more solid information and practices for you to realize all these topics for yourself within yourself, right? Which is the main purpose of this channel to help everyone understand these more deeper and subtle dimensions of consciousness in our lives, in the direct experience of our lives. So, you know, and now that I'm at uh, 2000 subscribers, uh, YouTube has offered me to create YouTube specific memberships. Uh, as you can see, this little join button here. So if you'd like to join as an Astral Doorway member through that instead of Patreon, uh, you can do so too. The perks are the same as the Patreon ones, except for YouTube, I added a little $1 a month option where you just get badges next to your name instead of... Uh, you know, nothing, and you get to use emojis when you leave little comments. So it's just a little extra way to support the channel if you like. So let's get answering all of your questions, and I'm going to blast through them. Um, and you know, as you can see, I requested those questions here, and I guided everyone to the community page here where. I asked you to leave the questions here. So let's go through these questions. Uh, let me sort it by 
newest first, and then I will scroll down to the bottom to the first question that was asked. So, Treta asks, in the astral, can you teleport yourself to any moment in any time you desire on Earth? Can you ask any question to the Akashic Records and will it be answered? In theory, yes. Since the astral plane is beyond time and space, the fifth dimension, right? I've spoke about this before in other videos. Therefore, it is not limited by the third dimension of space nor the fourth dimension of time. Meaning, in the astral, distance between objects are essentially an illusion. And duration between points in time are an illusion too. Uh, with that said, in practice, this may not be as easy and straightforward as that. Why? Well, consider how much work or conscious, <clears throat> sorry, or conscious effort and insight is needed in your own personal life to come to certain epiphanies or profound realizations, right? So, Spiritual realizations or discoveries are not just as simple as saying, oh, okay, I've read that the astral plane is completely accessible to any point in time or space. Um, we need to have a progressive and linear kind of working towards achieving certain things. So I'm not saying nothing is possible, but I'm saying that there are certain things we have to understand. So apply this principle that I'm talking about to discovering something magnificent in the astral plane. Uh, whether or not you will find what you're looking for really depends on the type of energetic being that you are, right? You see, we never see or experience what we're not ready to. Just like in physical life, you don't become rich if you're not ready to be rich. Uh, you don't get to the next level of a course if you're not ready for it. You can also see this as that often during these experiences, our higher self is always within this very subtle sense of our consciousness. It's always within, right? Our higher self. So this deeper part of you knows that certain things aren't meant to be, right? Some people ask, you know, why can't I just find the lottery numbers, right? And win some money. Uh, you know, think about how much money would affect your life, right? And, you know, a lot of people would say that, okay, if I had a lot of money, uh, my life would become very spiritual. But come on, let's, let's see the corruption that money has done to a lot of people. So you have to be very careful, right? And, you know, you, we just have to trust the process. If you can't find a particular thing, then there is a reason for that. Uh, for example, from my own experience, uh, I've tried several times to find my father, and uh, I've never known him in the physical. And in the astral, uh, you know, I tried many times to look for him. I, I intended to just see him or find him. Um, uh, my mum never told me anything good about him. Uh, he was, I don't know, he... <laughs> the impressions I've got of him are uh, of a negative nature. You could say he's done a lot of bad things, she would say. So uh, every time I tried, uh, I was either distracted, uh, faced with another challenge, I ended up in a void, or I just woke up. So, you know, did I get frustrated with the fact that I couldn't find him? No. Uh, I know 
there's always a reason for it. Uh, perhaps in 10 years or so, I'll find out. Uh, until then, I won't stress about it or get identified with it. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, okay, so Ewok Wrangler says, a step-by-step -step guide on your regular process, if any, would be good. And of course, details about how you feel you were able to start doing this regularly, as well as what helps you the most to develop a regular practice. Uh, Ewok, check out my video called My Simple Step-by-Step -step Method. Uh, with that said, I don't have any regular or routine process, uh, but rather I live by feeling what is right for me to do during each day or each moment, right? Uh, one day I may focus only on meditation, uh, another I may not. Uh, another I may do specific mantras and another I may focus on getting up in the middle of the night. Uh, Every day is different, and I don't think we should focus on set routines. Uh, set routines are what keeps our consciousness in autopilot and unconscious and habitual living. Uh, you asked me what helped me to develop a regular practice. Uh, the question is about what helps, right? Present tense, rather than what helped. Because, as I said, we need to leave behind the idea of developing some set routine for our practices to just be another boring nine to five soul destroying habit, right? Uh, and so every day I wake up, I make the effort to meditate, to read, to contemplate, uh, to get in touch with myself and feel what I need for this day and to be self aware and self-aware of my challenges, self-aware of my struggles, everything. Uh, so, and with that said, uh, you know, I consider this the sort of supreme thing. You know, I find meditating uh, as soon as I wake up uh, helps me tremendously to not have a day where I'm just living unconsciously as if I'm in a dream, right? And we've all done it. You know, you wake up in the day one day, uh, you're in a rush, you're going to work, you're going to school, you've got things, you're, you're late for things um, and you come back and you go to sleep and, you know, you just have one of those days where it is just like a blur, just like a dream, right? So, yes. Uh, Coptix asks... Is it possible to astral project into the past? I did it for the first time, and when I looked at my body, I noticed my hair was short, but it hasn't been like that in around a year and a half. Uh, not to mention, I saw a roommate in the kitchen that wasn't home at that point. Uh, finally, do you have any tips on remaining calm? I assume I panicked because I didn't expect to do it as soon as I did, but any tips would be appreciated. Thank you so much for your channel. I binged every video and actually learned how to astral project fairly quickly. So, yes. Well, thank you, Coptics, and it's great to hear you learned how to astral project through the channel. Uh, that's exactly why the channel exists, and to read comments like yours really helps me to keep going. Um, because it just makes me happy to see people are understanding these things as I do too. So as for your qu first question uh, about going into the past, uh, I think I already covered that in the first question. Uh, but as for your second question about remaining calm, you essentially already answered the question yourself, right? You said, I panicked because I didn't expect to do it as soon as I did. So therefore, if you want to be more calm, contemplate this psychological aspect of yourself, which puts expectation and assumptions onto your experience. You expected it to happen in a particular way, 
and you experience something different. So in other words, open yourself up to the possibility that these experiences can happen much more quicker and easier than we all usually assume with our demented minds filled with self-limiting beliefs, right? Filled with ideas of what we think reality should be. We do this with everything in life. So anything that helps you remain calm once in the astral will help, really. Uh, You can do things such as breathing, meditating, focusing on details, uh, or focusing more on what you want to achieve once out of body. Uh, This will all distract your overthinking ego and do something else more actively. Uh, Camus asks, I have a problem that's When I come out of my body in a normal vibrational state, I often feel like I'm in a lucid dream. This whole world is empty. I don't feel any energy in it. Uh, Do you know what would help in this situation? Well, this can be complicated because of the complication, uh, complexity, and fragmentation of our consciousness, right? Uh, In reality, If while in the physical we do not understand the difference between our illusory dreamlike perception of the world, then when we're in the astral we're likely to sometimes encounter experiences like you did. Uh, In those moments I wouldn't focus too much on what type of experiences you're having but instead remain calm and contemplative and just try to comprehend the kind of experience and the kind of environment that you're in. Even if it's a dream environment, there's usually going to be some kind of value there in terms of learning about yourself. And remember, you can still increase your awareness by meditation. Or you should also try the method I gave in my video called How to Astral Project from a Lucid Dream. Uh, My advice is to just keep at it. Don't get stuck in your analysis. Uh, Not everything is meant to be quantified into concepts of the mind. Uh, So, you know, if you want to quantify and conclude every experience, then how can you continue learning, right? Uh, This is the essence of what it means to be experienced, Uh, not to be obsessed about getting to the goal, getting to the conclusion, uh, getting to the achievement, right? It's about enjoying every path and being, uh, being okay with not totally understanding everything. So, Deepen your understanding of the answer to your question by gaining more experience. And remember, a full-on OBE with all your senses intact, with your usual sense of self, is far from the experience you just described. Uh, Astral projection is not something easily doubted due to the immensity and palpability of the experience. So, yes, uh, And also, as I said at the start, when I mentioned about the uh, fragmentation of our consciousness, uh, I talked about this in, I believe it was this one, uh, Rise Above Time to Understand the Astral Plane. So uh, definitely check out that video as well. Um, And how to meditate as well may also help you. And... Here is also the uh, how to astral project from a lucid dream as well. Try the methods in there too. Okay, so let's get on to the next question. Uh, Okay, Irvin asks, have you ever used crystals for astral projection or seen if crystals have any energy in the astral? Uh, No, I've... 
not done anything like that intentionally, although I have worn a Moldavite pendant for the past year, and it's probably helped in some way. Uh, when I was also reading some books on shamanism some years ago, uh, I did do a practice where I had to find an object in the astral uh, and then find it in the physical. And when I did it, uh, I found a smooth, large pebble on my road and then went back to the physical and found the same pebble and brought it back home with me. Um, I'll probably, I'll make a note actually and share that experience uh, because it's a lot more profound than what I'm saying because when I found that pedal, uh, pebble, um, I experienced some sort of uh, energetic shift, which I will do my best to try and uh, describe. Um, so yes, I do think objects like these can be good physical reminders or even energetic catalysts for experiences if we combine them with intention in the correct way. So Finality asks, is it possible for you to schedule astral meetups? Okay, well, yes, perhaps in the future, if I have more time for this channel. Uh, initially, my mind says, geez, uh, <laughs> I don't think I have time for that. And trying to coach and help people to achieve and meet up with each other and all the complexities and questions that are going to come out from that, uh, you know, in order for multiple people to actually achieve meeting each other in the same spot. Um, but yes, I think that's a nice idea actually. And let's perhaps do that in the future when I have more time to organize something like that. It would be interesting to see the results. So yes, thank you, Finality. Okay, Barbara, how do you know if you are slipping from astral to a lucid dream? I know for a fact that I'm getting out correctly, but strange stuff happening starts happening after I leave my neighborhood perimeter. Uh, I ended up in a city that looked like the industrial age. And the second time I tried going to space and ended up seeing Earth as Google Maps. Okay. Okay, so again, it's more of a case of understanding your own consciousness and the activity and movements of it while we're in these experiences. This is why meditation is very important. Um, this meditative awareness, this sense of control over us, our selves and our faculties and our emotions. Uh, you know, in order to have this clear and fully controlled type of awareness about where you are, what your mind is connecting to, and how you're feeling. Uh, you know, the astral plane has been commonly referred to as the emotional plane. And and that is the sort of driving stick or compass of your astral body. And this really responds to your emotions. You know, this is your navigation. This is your sat-nav, so to speak. So, and with that said, uh, just remember as well, if you're walking down a road and the environment starts to change to another city or something, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're slipping into a dream state. Uh, actually, this is a common way for us to travel long distances in the astral. Uh, simply by holding the intention to be in another location and we just move forward. And as we do, the environment naturally shifts as if by magic. Uh, it morphs and transforms, right? Yeah, as I said in the first question, there is actually no distance between objects or space in the astral being in the fifth dimension. So I hope that kind of points towards 
the reality of that. Okay, uh, Lewis, uh, Lewis asks, can the astral body feel pain? Mm, yes, a sort of illusory one. Uh, all pain is illusory in reality. Uh, you know, it, the astral body can feel emotional and physical pain, right? Uh, as above, so below. But of course, if it's emotional pain, then this is just due to our identification with some sort of pain, right? And of course, if it's physical, then it's really due to our attachments and habits of thinking that we should feel it. And in reality, if you feel some sort of pain, uh, it can disappear within an instant if you just realize that it's just an illusion. And that pain is just ultimately in the mind. Uh, remember, you can change your form or shape shift in the astral. Uh, in those moments, you are pure and non-physical awareness. Uh, pain is just an illusion. Uh, everything that from the way, from the down to, you know, how you appear in the astral and what you feel and think is all down to your own human conditioning. Okay, so Karen asks, uh, hey, you mention a lot during your videos that you need to let go of your ego. What do you mean by this? Yes, um, you know, I'm sorry that I don't uh, explain some basics sometimes, such as the ego. I've just been doing this quite intensely for a long time, and you know, in reality, astral projection is a very advanced thing, and the people who are interested in it uh, usually know what the ego is. Uh, but yes, anyway, with that said, the ego is that psychological part of ourselves that is identified to the conditioning of external reality. Now, when I put it like that, it may not seem so significant, but trust me, the ego is the most challenging aspect of the spiritual path. It is the path, really. It is the great path of knowing ourselves, of understanding the depths of our own psychology. Uh, you know, enlightenment and awakening is not some blissful and enjoyable thing where, oh, wow, I just found an amazing teaching and I've uh, realized this lovely thing. Uh, enlightenment is a lot about understanding the, the core aspects of yourself. It is about understanding and realizing that everything, almost everything you've learned throughout your entire life is false. Uh, every belief, every opinion, every everything that you, you love and are attached to, it's, it can be a painful process for a lot of people. And that's why not everyone is uh, ready for this sort of new state of consciousness that, that's arising with spiritual progression. Um, so yes, and you know, those who don't address this aspect are in reality not following an authentic or true path. Now, uh, let's give some basic examples. Uh, if someone insults you and you feel offended, that's your ego. Uh, every time you look around at uh, another person fearing what they think, uh, that's your ego. Uh, every time you judge another person and think they're somehow inferior to you, that's your ego. Every time you have a heated and angry argument with someone, that's your ego. Every time you're in self-pity, depressed, uh, being shy because you think you're, you know, a shy person, right? or being anxious, or worrying, right? That's your ego. The ego is the, th the thing that sends images to our minds, and we react to those images, making us behave and react in particular ways. 
The ego is our idea, our thought structure about ourselves, of what we think we are. And what we think we are is just a self-created image. And if we've created that ourselves, then we are not what we have created. We are the the basis, uh, the underlying creation process that underlies and goes beyond all of that. Uh, but of course, we are stuck in this this identification with with everything that we create. Um, so the reason why it's important to become aware of these movements of images and identifications and, and this ego is so that we can liberate ourselves from this unconscious psychological patterns that keep us from fully living present in the eternal moment and just being here and now fully in life, uh, being aware from moment to moment, you know, the ego is memory. It's an illusory mirror that talks to you and tells you this or that should be different. It tells you that you should be in conflict with external reality. Uh, you know, it tells you that all your experience should be <laughs> not right, that you were the one that should add to it and you're not happy with this and you're not happy with that. It creates disorder in our lives by tempting us to not accept our life situation and events. And we wish for this. We wish we were rich. We were rich. We were in a perfect relationship and this and that. And it's always telling us that our lives aren't perfect and not good enough. So, you know, it's that devil on the shoulder who tells you you should feel sorry for yourself or tells you you shouldn't believe in yourself. Uh, this is a very, very important aspect about knowing ourselves because often we are completely unaware of the movements of our sort of psychological eyes, right? The psychological me, 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 I, this, I want that, I want this, I feel this way. This is, these are identifications with thoughts, with feelings, yes? You know, when you say, I feel this way, who is talking, right? It is a psychological I, not you, right? You are awareness. You are not these thought forms. So, and often for most people, this is the main driving force of our emotions and desires and, and actions and, and willpower. We're living from, from a state of, of uh, thoughts that live in our minds. And actually, uh, if you go into the astral or dreams, uh, you can actually see these psychological eyes as actual people with their own thoughts, with their own feelings, with their own emotions. So this is where the idea of, you know, demons come from and that we create our own demons. Um, I've had experiences like these, very personal ones that I don't often share. Um, and I've kind of spoken to uh, parts of myself, you know, uh, like lustful parts, angry parts, uh, parts of myself that want this or that, that, that um, kind of feel sorry for myself or... Uh, want to, you know, be rich and famous and, th you know, nonsense like that, that, that's all in our minds that keep us from having these peaceful states of mind. So, you know, and considering all that, you know, consider what would we be like if we were completely free from those distractions? completely free from the dreams of these psychological eyes, these psychological me, 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 me. You can't 
imagine the level of peace and profoundness uh, that emerges when we go beyond all that noise and nonsense and delusions in our heads about the idea of ourselves, uh, no matter how spiritually elevated you think an idea is as well, right? We may, you know, have whatever idea about ourselves, but it's just an idea. And, you know, but most of us aren't ready for that level of peace or acceptance. And so it's a gradual process. Uh, I highly recommend listening to the audiobook The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Uh, it's a very good place to start. Uh, listen to the audiobook. It's narrated by the author himself, and it's uh, much better than the paperback, in my opinion. Uh, that book is an excellent place to start if you're you know, genuinely interested and, and ready for this type of uh, thinking. So, you know, uh, it's about being identified with the idea of you and who you think you are. You know, my name is Jean. I am a man. I am spiritual. I know better than you. I should be rich. I am amazing at this or that. Uh, my wife should not treat me like this because I am so special. Um, why do people think of me like that? Uh, I hate when people do this or that, right? These are all examples of the ego. So I hope that helps. Uh, also check out uh, this recent video, uh, Going Beyond the Spiritual Ego. Uh, I cover some uh, similar topics there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so uh, JD asks, have you ever tried the Gateway Experience Tapes by the Monroe Institute? Uh, do you think they are a good stepping stone in order to learn astral projection? Uh, P.S. Thank you for your great content. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you, JD. I appreciate you. And you ask some very good questions later on, I noticed. So thanks again. Um, no, I've not tried those tapes. Uh, however, I have listened to the first couple of tapes, and that was enough for me to understand that this is a fantastic resource for people to induce these experiences. Now, why is it a fantastic resource? Because it's a practical course rather than an intellectual one. Uh, from the very beginning, it's already teaching you how to access these altered states of consciousness. So yes, I think it's a great stepping stone if it works for you. <clears throat> okay. Trinity asks, what are your recommendations for books, uh, resources to learn about more of the occult, astral travel, or anything else you would suggest? Yes, okay. Um, uh, I will probably suggest more books as I go on in these uh, questions too from some of the things that I've seen. Uh, but uh, as well as The Power of Now, like I, I just uh, answered in Karen's question, um, through reading his experiences, uh, Eckhart Tolle's, uh, you know, not so much experiences, but spiritual awakening, um, you'll understand the basic uh, sort of movements of consciousness and the development and, and awakening. Uh, and, and you'll start to sense in your own, when you, when you compare it with your own consciousness, uh, how to start walking towards this more liberated way of being. Um, as well as that, I recommend reading Jürgen Ziva's books. Uh, he's, I'll put everything in the description, by the way. Everything I uh, say in this video, I will take a note and put everything down. Uh, but yes, Jürgen Ziva, uh, let's see, Jürgen Ziva books. Let me just search this. <clears throat> um, okay, here. Yes, I recommend his books because through reading his experiences as well, uh, you will understand some of the great potential that astral projection holds in a very vivid and personal way. Uh, he has three books, I believe, uh, on astral projection. 
Uh, they're all fantastic. Multi-Dimensional Man, uh, Vistas of Infinity, and The 10-Minute Moment. Uh, if you would like very specific techniques on how to have out-of-body experiences, uh, I recommend Hacking the Out-of-Body Experience by Robert Peterson. Bob Peterson. This is a very good book um, because... Uh, it holds, you know, it, rather than focusing on just consciousness, it, it really is more about uh, focusing on specific techniques. And it is filled with just a lot of techniques, right? So, uh, you know, as you know, my channel focuses more on the development of consciousness and trying to access astral projection in a gradual and natural way. But of course, techniques can really help as well. And there are, there's a lot of them in that book. Uh, and also, what else could I recommend? Uh, if you're more into deep occult stuff, because that's what you asked, um, and if you're very super open-minded, uh, perhaps try 26 Techniques for Astral Projection by Samael Aoun Veil. So, uh, 26 Techniques. Let's see. <clears throat> yes, this one. So, try that. Uh, and also, a wonderful book. Um which is this one, The Day Spring of Youth by M. This is a very, very profound uh, occult book. Uh, yes. But only read those if you are actually open-minded to more uh, sort of, sort of uh, more obscure uh, occult ideas. Uh, they're not really explained in layman's terms, and they're very easy to misinterpret. So, yeah, there's a few books for you. Okay, so uh, Rebecca asks, how is spirituality and AP related? Do you need to be a highly spiritual person in order to astral project? No, you do not. Uh, can you be spiritual without being religious? Okay. You know, being spirit, uh, you know, can you be spiritual without being religious? Well, you know, let's understand that from a purer standpoint, there is, you know, originally there is no difference between spirituality and religion. Religion comes from the word uh, union, right? Which is like oneness, which is to unify, which is to commune with, with our spirit. Right, but of course, uh, religion has turned into this sort of uh, uh, sects, right, of churches and, and everything like that. So, and then of course, on the other end of the coin, spirituality has become this sort of, uh, you know, getting away from religions. But in the true sense of it, uh, you know, there is no difference. Um, but yes, of course, I know what you mean. Uh, yes, you can be spiritual without being religious, of course, and vice versa, right? One can be religious without being spiritual at all. So, um, and, you know, to answer your first question, well, I could say, no, you don't need to be spiritual, but, you know, what is spiritual? Uh, are we all not spiritual beings, even if we're not identified as such? Uh, but yes, one doesn't need to focus on spiritual topics, and they can even happen spontaneously to anyone. Uh, however, there are a plethora of wonderful resources, guides, and teachers out there in the present day and in history who have given so many guideposts uh, to get to the destination. Astral projection is inherently spiritual because, as I said earlier, the experience is the direct realization that there is something beyond what you ordinarily know and understand about the world that you've been introduced to. Uh, and when you realize there's infinitely more than the tiny amount that your small intellect comprehends, 
then you naturally begin to open your mind or in other words, expand your consciousness. So you begin to develop uh, self-knowledge instead of the parroted knowledge of the external world. So, you know, I think being spiritual and being astral projection is very uh, commonly, um, you know, it goes hand in hand usually, but you don't need to be a uh, quote unquote spiritual or identified as being spiritual at all. No, uh, you can have these experiences, uh, you know, as a completely objective uh, scientist, right? Okay. Uh, this and that <laughs> asks, um, whenever I reach the vibrational stage, a strong sense of fear kicks in and stops me from being able to astral project. Have you got any tips to overcome that fear? Yes. Well, you know, Fear is the greatest barrier to astral projection. And, you know, it's, you know, fear basically is the greatest barrier to any endeavor we take up in life, right? Whether it's a new job, whether it's uh, approaching uh, the, the new uh, potential uh, wife in your life or something, right? Uh, anything. Um, you know, it, you don't have to just study fear in the context of astral projection. Fear is fear itself. In It's always the same. It, it, and we always react to it the same way. Um, you know, you don't, you can ask advice and wisdom about fear from anyone, anyone who you understand as courageous, and then you can apply that wisdom to astral projection. So, you know, you know, don't just take my advice, um, contemplate what fear really is. And, you know, uh, just to give you a bit of advice uh, from myself, uh, we overcome fear by self-inquiry and realizing that fear is never logical in the sense that fear derives from imagining a reality which you assume exists or which you don't even know exists, right? Fear comes from assuming you know, you think you know uh, how something will play out, you know? Uh, to el elaborate uh, on the question earlier about the ego, you know, fear is literally the ego, um, you know, or an ego presenting you with images in the mind because you're not aware it's just a silly nonsensical ego playing games with you and you react in that way and you think those images are real but they are not so ego and fear goes hand in hand because the ego the psychological aspects of us uh, are become in conflict with our experience and don't accept whatever is happening in our experience, right? We have to be like a gentle stream, no obstructions in our inner rivers, right? We need to just let our experiences flow and not put a massive rock or a dam in our experience and in our river and start to uh, get stuck, right? And have form these energetic blockages. We need to open up and whatever happens, happens, right? So you need to simply observe the fear and see it for what it is without judging it or without being identified with it, right? Fear is just, as I said, it's, it's an energy in the river and the river is going faster, right? And that's okay, just watch it and let it go by. But often we resist the fear and we try to block it or fight against it and it just gets worse. So, you know, realize that it is not you. It is just an occurrence within you and it will pass. You know, this shall pass. And, you know, realize that it's not you who is fearful 
but just a psychological aspect of you. Uh, you know, it's also, of course, it takes some courage, right? Uh, every ego we transcend holds some sort of treasure. Uh, and that treasure is the liberation of our consciousness. And who's holding our consciousness uh, captive? It's our egos, right? And we have to just, you know, we don't use violence. Uh, we just, we have to use intelligent comprehension to understand why I'm in fear, right? To understand what's going on, just to watch it and smile and carry on anyway. And this is how we kind of slay uh, our egos, right? This is the hidden meaning behind slaying a dragon in order to find the gold that it's guarding. Yes. So the, you know, the dragon is the ego and we slay the ego. And, you know, as it is, as it goes on in so many uh, children's stories, there is some gold within the cave uh, that the dragon was living in. And we become rich, right? Not materially rich, but we become uh, spiritually rich. Okay, so Mena asks, can we go to the past when we astral project? Will we enter our young, uh, our younger body or only be the observer? Uh, both, actually. Uh, can we change something there? So, uh, you know, I've already mostly answered this question. Uh, as for the other parts of your question, uh, yes, if you go into your past, then you will experience your younger self. And no, you will have no control and you won't be able to change anything. Uh, the past is set in stone. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, remember, Time is an illusion, and it only exists as a memory in your field of knowledge. In other words, your experience. Um, you will only experience whatever you experienced in the past. Uh, and, But of course, when you do experience this in the astral plane, uh, you'll also have your present day self of a uh, sense of self with you in order to reflect intelligently on what's happened. So uh, watch my video called uh, meeting a guide in the astral plane and remembering that I astral projected as a child. I, I had, I, I, I went into the past there. So you'll see an example of this. And I described uh, how it felt that I was a child again, but also the observer of who I am right now at the same time. So it's a very peculiar um, sensation when you experience it. Yes. Okay. Oreo asks, I've recently been getting pretty close to AP. Or at least I think. Uh, for example, yesterday I think I almost did it. Uh, it felt, oh, I felt my body start to vibrate. But when this happens, my heart starts beating pretty fast and only calms down when my vibrations went away. Uh, this happened three times. Getting my body to freeze takes quite a bit of effort, but my heart always decides to ruin AP. Uh, sometimes I feel my body hates me or something. Uh, any tips or advice to have a calm heartbeat rate while trying to AP? Yes. Well, if you feel your body hates you, uh, then perhaps you hate your body too. <laughs> uh, hate implies relationship, right? Don't develop a negative relationship with it. Uh, in reality, if you aren't separate from your body, uh, remember, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, you are, you are not separate from the body, I mean. And remember, the word yoga or religion means union. So meditate and get in touch with your body. Um, in order to, you know, you're in the way you're speaking right now is that you're observing your body. Uh, so that's the observed and you're the observer. Uh, but in reality, you know, 
the ultimate reality, the more profound aspect to self-realization is that there is no uh, ob- there is no uh, duality or conflict between the observe and the observer, right? So we have to get in touch with ourselves and our body and 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 stop this uh, these things that cause conflict uh, in our experience. So uh, and you know there is an, an infinite amount of intelligence to be found in the body. Uh, it is our gateway to all these experiences. Uh, and as for your heart beating, um, I'm not going to go into the possibilities of, of, of what all that could be, but let me, you know, I'm going to give you a sort of, uh, uh, article here. So, the guardian of the threshold. I think it's this uh, by Bob Peterson, one of the authors that I uh, recommended earlier. So yes, this one. I will leave this in the description. Um, Please read it. Uh, And this goes for anyone, okay? It's very helpful. I always recommend it to a lot of people. Um, you know, anyone who has fear or has, uh, your heart beating fast or something, or you're seeing shadow people in sleep paralysis or any other kind of nonsense like that, right? Please read that article. Uh, I think it will really help you, uh, understand that stage of separation and not to overthink it. Uh, you should be more focused on what you want to achieve rather than analyzing the perception uh, of sensations, of separating, okay? There's a lot of overthinking that happens when people try to separate. So we have to be, you know, we have to be very uh, impartial towards all the sensations that are happening and we need to be more centered in our consciousness. Okay, so uh, Oreo also asks, uh, is it possible to learn a skill through AP? Uh, For example, if I wanted to learn Japanese, uh, could I ask someone like my guide to teach me? Uh, Sure, you could probably learn a skill. Uh, But are you really going to waste your time in such a profound experience just learning Japanese when you can do that in the physical? Wouldn't you rather go to some sublime reality or go to space or just see or talk to something uh, much more profound, you know, you probably want to utilize uh, lucid dreaming for uh, those other kind of skills maybe. You know, I used to practice uh, the guitar in lucid dreams actually, and I'm sure it helped in some way. But yes, you know, I'm pretty sure if you ask your guide to teach you Japanese, <laughs> he would probably face palm himself, right? <clears throat> your guides are only concerned with your spiritual growth and progression. They're not concerned with uh, trivial things, right? That's for you to do. That's for you to do in your physical life. Uh, You know, all these earthly matters, our worldly things, get them done. Do whatever you need to do, right? Go to your job, do your chores, uh, have a shower, right? All these things. The more difficult thing is for us to follow the spiritual path. I bet almost every one of you listening right now have probably told yourself, I should probably meditate more. I should probably try to astral project more. Uh, I should probably try to work on my ego more, but I don't, right? Why? Because it's difficult, especially living in this physical life and this uh, material life of of limitation, of suffering, of, of experiencing our karma internally, externally. So, 
they are there to help with that. And if you ask for help for those purposes, they will help. You can ask for their help while in the physical or also in the astral. Um, you know, they're always there waiting for you to finally kick yourself up the arse and wake up to reality and actually start living and asking the right questions. <laughs> okay, I hope that helps, Aria. Uh, Helena, you asked a question, uh, but I think, yes. I think I've mostly covered it and given book recommendations in the description below. Um, or, you know, I've, I've taken notes and, and I will uh, give them. Um, also check out my video called The Key of Sol, which is here, okay, the, the previous video. Uh, that method of The Key of Sol may help you too. And I also left some links to uh, teachings about what the Gnostic teachings are. Um, <clears throat> you said agnostic, right? Uh, it's not agnostic, okay? It's Gnostic. <laughs> uh, you can search up the, the uh, definitions, the difference. Uh, but what I can say, you know, is, you know, I read your question earlier. Um, what I can say is stop trying too hard and trust more in the process and also be infinitely patient, okay? You know, these experiences totally unfold when we are not impatient and not anxiously waiting for it to happen. Um, you know, I don't know if you're feeling that, but it kind of sounds like maybe you are experiencing that. Um, but yes, uh, check out the resources uh, in the description below. Um, yes. Okay. So Tom asks, uh, is astral travel the foundation of Gnosis? Uh, is this direct knowledge of things also at the heart of other traditions, uh, theosophy and stuff like that? Yes, okay. So yes. Um, so no, uh, it is not at the foundation of Gnosis. Absolutely not. Uh, yes, yeah. just to make it clear for everyone, sorry, I was just reading his other question. Um, no astral projection, uh, astral travel is not at the foundation of Gnosis. And it should, uh, you know, in, in my you know, personal viewpoint as well, it should absolutely not be at the foundation of anyone's spiritual practice. Um, I'm sure that surprises some of you because I've created a YouTube just dedicated to astral travel, right? I think astral travel is a wonderful gateway to the spiritual world of spiritual understanding and enlightenment and self-realization. Astral travel is like the most healthiest uh, drug that you can take in order to awaken your consciousness. It's like, you know... It's like a big slap in the face. That is why I love astral projection because it's a big slap in the face. You have an ex a profound experience and you wake up and you're like, whoa, what did I just experience? Rather than, you know, just the gradual uh, awakening and, and then sometimes it's not clear, uh, astral travel is, it, it's, a profound realization in those moments that is just so clear and so real. So yes. Yeah. So yes, sorry, we're coming off topic. <laughs> uh, with that said, you know, so it's not at the, it's not at the foundation of Gnosis. Uh, the foundation of Gnosis is the awakening of consciousness. Astral projection occurs naturally when the awakening of consciousness blooms tremendously it when it blooms uh like really really you know radically right it's not just oh, you know a little awakening here a little awakening there you know you will find a lot of uh spiritual teachers 
not talking about astral projection and I know they have their reasons and I, I suspect a lot of them do um, experience it, but they they understand that it's not at the foundation of spirituality like you said so we really as i said before astral projection is actually very advanced so yes this direct knowledge of the unknown or of the divine is originally at the heart of every pure tradition but of course, this aspect has been lost throughout time and history. And instead, religions these days only feed dogma and intellectual thoughts and ideas instead of teaching us how we can experience these realities for ourselves directly instead of just believing. Uh, you know, the meaning of Gnosis is the direct experience of these realities, which is, which is far more better and effective than belief, you know, far more valuable, right? Experiences better than belief. Okay. So, uh, Tom also asks, uh, in your experience, do good and evil exist as absolutes, or is there merely uh, more or less conscious behavior? Right, so, you know, just to address good and evil, uh, they are just mental concepts, ultimately, right? They aren't just, they are not just mental concepts for most people. For most people, they are stuck in good and evil, and those are like absolute realities, right? People have their beliefs of good and bad, good and evil, and they are living in that. But uh, talking from a more profound standpoint, uh, these are just mental concepts, and that's all they are. Uh, you know, but for most of our consciousness, it's so embedded in the duality and conflict of good and bad that we're unable to connect to these higher universal intelligences and perspectives that exist beyond the ideas of good and bad. And of course, there is also positive and negative, but still, the, the realities that exist beyond this duality does have a sort of, I don't want to call it good, uh, or positive, let's call it uh, purity. It has a purity at its core. So, and when we think of uh, mental concepts of good, those are just ideas aspiring to purity. And the, the mental concepts of evil are the ones that are resisting uh, these realities of, of purity. And, you know, these, uh, we, we're all human beings, right? We're, we are all members of this creation, of this cosmos, and we can all sense this purity within us. And we either do good things to try and connect to that divine purity, or we do bad things because, you know, we hate life, we resist life, and you know, all that nonsense. So, yes, I hope that kind of points towards uh, what what that means. <clears throat> or at least, you know, the, the insights that I've gotten uh, about that. Okay. So... Oh, I think, okay, you have another question here. So uh, Tom also asks, uh, I recall a lecture on the path towards spiritual awakening by American Advaita, uh, a teacher called uh, Adi Shanti. Oh yes, I think I've seen his teachings a bit. Um, in this lecture, he mentions very much passing that uh, as a result of deepening meditation and spiritual practice, one might develop or one should, right? <laughs> uh, one might develop 
powers and abilities that are not normal. You know, so many teachers, uh, if you see old and, and wise and enlightening masters like this talk, they, they just, they, they will talk about, uh, very profound things about life just to try to, you know, help people get past the important part, which, right, is the ego. And then they'll just give you little hints here and there, right? Um, so many masters do this. And as you said, uh, one might develop powers and abilities that are not normal. And then they don't explain this, right? Of course, one of those uh, abilities is uh is astral projection. I think Jiddu Krishnamurti, he never talks about psychic things, but in one talk he said that, uh, you know, he said, being awake from, from moment to moment, he said that uh, we can be awake in our sleep too and connect or uh, see the unknown when we disconnect ourselves from the known. And he just hints at it right because i'm sure a lot of these uh masters have reputations to uphold and if they said that they were suddenly you know had psychic abilities uh, they wouldn't be able to help as many people as they did right as many of the masses that they touch and still do through the internet and such so sorry to continue yeah uh, so Yes, one might develop powers and abilities that are not normal. However, the idea then is not to get caught up in those as they can oppose spiritual traps and trip someone up on the path towards awakening. Do you, that is, it, this is one of the most core teachings and uh, I should have made a video on this already. So yes, <clears throat> thank you. Uh, do you think astral travel poses a risk or do the experiences it provides humble us and keep us grounded, right? It can be both, right? So yes, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, take note, everyone. Astral projection is not an end goal, okay? Stop seeing it as this wonderful, enlightening, and amazing superpower that only masters or phantismal people can experience. It is just an experience, a sense experience. It is not that significant compared to the far greater and more profound journey of our souls and awakening to absolute consciousness, right? Th that to which we point towards the, the 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 reality of god right so you know this this ineffable beauty that we can sense beyond all these sense experiences and getting caught up and identified in the senses so as i've said before in my video called uh, how to meditate and attain astral projection consciousness uh, which is this one when we focus on deep meditation, we hurl ourselves into the depths of sublime realities and understand things that are actually far more profound than the astral plane. And when we keep training ourselves to reside in these higher states of consciousness, we, act, we naturally contract back to our usual self to the physical right but if we're lucky uh, we and we don't lose consciousness too much and instead reside hopefully at least at the level of the astral plane instead of going lower right uh, where even if we have astral experiences um, we should train ourselves to be impartial towards those experiences and not get stuck or identified with them right? Uh, this is why it's crucial to have enlightenment. Because forever, you know, I guarantee if all of the world recalled their past lives right now, um, they would, you know, most people would just be 
stupidly identified with it and start thinking that they are their past lives and that perhaps they were murderers so they are now and start getting sad or fearful or something and that they're going to go to hell uh, and just all that other nonsense and confusions of the ego and the mind. So this is just obstructing yourself and therefore this is why most of us don't have experiences because in the perspective of our higher self, it knows that if you have a particular experience, then you're going to react in a particular way, perhaps a negative way. And therefore, you won't continue the important work of the spiritual path, right? Uh, But if your higher self can sense that you are ready and that you will learn wisely instead of being caught up with the experience then you are far more likely to be granted certain experiences you know Uh, so yes to answer your question they can hinder our progress or humble us and keep us grounded and that entirely depends on the wisdom or lack of wisdom of the individual we need to use astral projection as just a tool to complement our awakening of consciousness. That's it. Okay. The way to get on the astral plane is, is the start of learning. It's the start of, of, uh, of walking the path, right? You know, we can walk the path anytime. I I, I know. I, I mean, I'm just saying that whenever we astral project, we shouldn't, you know, be celebrating then. Those times are, are the most important times to, all right, you know, get your head down, start learning, start studying, you know, pay attention. So great question. Very, very good question. Okay. And another question uh, by Tom, uh, Robert Romanro uh, describes a cord attached to his back, connecting him to his body whenever he Uh, goes out into the astral and beyond. Uh, He also describes that the act of tugging it will immediately return him to his body. Uh, Is that your experience too? Uh, I've personally personally never felt anything like that, Uh, but maybe that's because I've just never paid attention to it. Um, Regardless, I don't think it's something that important. Uh, If I ever remember to look for it, I'll let you know. I have once tried to look for it on my abdomen and I did feel and sense a strange uh, energy or convulsion coming from there, but no sign of a cord. So I'll look again, uh, Robert Monroe said on his back, right? So, hmm, you know, I'll have a look. (laughs) Okay. So next question. Uh, yes, by Tom. <laughs> uh, how does one get from the astral plane to other planes? What we have to realize is that when we talk about different planes, we're really just talking about different levels of consciousness. So imagine you're depressed and in a sad place. What kind of environment do you think you would connect to? Then imagine you suddenly completely uh, became aware of yourself and became instantly objective and peaceful. Then you'd, you know, you snap out of it. Uh, Then you'd naturally be able to escape that plane you're in, right? Because those planes are uh, reflections and are synonymous with levels of consciousness. So this is the basis in. Uh, practicing and understanding this. You know, with that said, there are some techniques uh, that can also become catalysts for that change to occur within. Uh, One common one that I've talked about, which you'll hear in my experience when I went to a heavenly planet from the lower astral, is the mantra OM. Uh, Try it if you're ever out of body. It's very powerful. Um, Uh, this one, Uh, meeting zombies in the lower astral. So uh, 
listen to that one if if you're interested. <clears throat> okay. So uh, Doodle asks, once I reach the stage of feeling vibrations uh, and sleep paralysis, I cannot seem to exit my body at all. Have you personally experienced this before? Of course, right? I've experienced almost all the struggles on the way there. Uh, and do you have any advice or methods to help exit the body? Uh, doodle, you know, hopefully you have already benet- uh, benefited from this sort of, uh, from all the answers I've given in this video. Uh, but with that said, I'll also leave a link to an article I wrote which directly addresses the issue of not being able to separate. Uh, It's called Seven Tips for Astral Projection. Uh, The first tip or the first uh, point uh, answers your question in a very direct way. Uh, So if you like the article, it is essentially a preview to my book. Um, So if you like the article, uh, you will love my book. I will leave that in the description below for you. Uh, Please check it out. I I hope it helps. Okay. Okay, Jacob, uh, I can't teleport, move in time, or do anything special in the astral. Whenever I try to do such a thing, I wake up. I can leave the body, walk around, and sometimes fly, but not uh, such cool things like other people. Why? Well, I'm not sure, Jacob. Uh, Keep trying. One tip I can give is that if you're closing your eyes when you try to teleport, then don't, okay? Keep your eyes open. I've experienced this before where I close my eyes when I intend to teleport somewhere else and I wake up back in bed, you know, by complete accident because I close my eyes. So remember that the astral plane is the perception of light, right? That is a very uh, basic and pure description of the experience, right? And this vision of light or astral light keeps us grounded there. So closing our eyes can essentially disconnect us from those realities, uh, of course, if your experience is absolutely fine to close your eyes, I've had I've closed my eyes many of times with no issues, and uh, so if you're experienced, it's fine, and you'll still be able to stay in the astral. But for beginners, I think this is a good tip, right? Just to remember, just to not close your eyes, just keep them open, stay stay grounded in those, stay grounded in the senses of that environment of that experience, right? Just how being in the physical, how do you stay grounded here? Uh, you you start going into the present moment, you uh, get in touch with your senses, right? So you just have to do the same in the astral. And you'll start to uh, get a feel for the astral a bit more and how you can instinctively uh, do do these more fanciful things such as teleport. Uh, it's very simple in practice, actually. Just, it, it only takes intention. Uh, and if you're struggling, say the intention out loud. You know, take me to, uh, I, I had an experience, right? Uh, which one was it? Um, let's see here. Reality check experience. And I said in that experience, you will hear me. I said, uh, take me to Africa, take me to Africa, take me to Africa. I said it three times uh, with, with, with strength and intention. And I ended up in the, the deserty plains of Africa. So yes. Okay. Uh, Again, Mac, uh, can waking up from a bad dream make an astral projection experience negative? Uh, this happened last night. I woke up from a, a messed up dream and found myself slipping into vibrations. I fought to stop them because I was worried that coming out of a bad dream could potentially throw me into a negative part of the astral. I mean, 
if you're worried already and fearful, then sure, it's already a possibility simply because of your worrying and fearfulness, not because of the, the dream, right? Our negative experience, our negative dreams, part of the lower astral dimension. Mm, yes, in a way. Uh, is it worth it to try to AP anyways? Sure. Yes. I mean, if you're overly scared, then probably not. Uh, so you have to consider whatever the state of consciousness you're in uh, could or would put you into the lower astral when you project. Now, this is not something to be feared. Um, if you can come out of a bad dream, uh, but be entirely detached and not identified with the experience, then maybe you'll be okay. Uh, as for if you do end up in the lower astral, uh, you also have to understand the astral is not something to be feared, uh, but instead understood. <clears throat> This should be a, a very a core part of everyone's approach, right? If we have fearful experiences, instead of being feared, fearful, seek to understand instead, right? You know, of course, this is usually a little more tricky in practice, I understand. Um, I, I recommend listening to my experience of uh, going from a lower astral to the higher one, as I said, to understand how quickly we can leave the lower astral if we choose to, as long as we don't give in to fear and we stay objective. Um, and, you know, you can also listen to my video on, uh, you know, how to protect myself as yourself as well, right? Sometimes I found myself in, in situations I can't leave and uh, uh, prayer, right, and guides, uh, and hi higher energies or, or your higher self can help. So that's always your backup plan. And, and, and as long as you know you have that backup plan, you have some faith in that, uh, there's nothing really to, 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 be, to be too fearful about. So, uh, you know, in a way, nightmares are already in the lower astral, uh, or they are at a similar level. Um, whether it's within our own heads or not, uh, I'm talking about the level of consciousness is, is very similar and connected to these the energies of the lower astral, right? Uh, but since most of the time it's a subjective experience within your own mind, uh, you're not actually perceiving the direct reality of the, uh, the astral just yet. Uh, until you obviously snap out of your own delusions uh, and then see uh, the reality of the astral. Um, and of course, in practice, uh, the reality of the lower astral is a lot more mm, uglier or sinister looking than uh, what we would usually like to believe. Uh, so that's why our nightmares are often they're illusion, they're illusionary and they they often don't look as scary as the lower astral so we we really do need to go beyond the idea of of you know you know beauty is just a mental you know uh, like physical beauty is mostly a, a mental concept uh, and just as is uh, ugliness or or uh, what the what you know, hell realms look like, right? The lower astral. We need to just see things objectively. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, and also check out that video, of course, on my on on the YouTube called uh, about my negative experiences and how to protect yourself. I think that might help as well. Uh, for me, I approach and view the lower astral as an opportunity to learn about it. Because it, it's kind of like humanity's uh, collective's uh, unconscious, right? Uh, and also as an opportunity to help souls who are suffering there. Uh, if you approach it in this way, rather than getting caught up in your own fears and worries, then this will benefit you a lot more, right? You'll be less self-involved thinking about yourself. 
JD asks, how do I do the things in life which I know are beneficial to me, but don't feel like doing? Uh, Working, studying, meditating, eating healthy and exercising. Uh, Okay, well, uh, as I've said, it's all about knowing yourself through self-inquiry, really asking yourself why you don't want to do what you want to do, right? There's no point having uh, fighting against it and fighting against yourself. You need to just sit down in a room with yourself, close the door uh, in the dark, uh, or maybe with a mirror, right? And just look at yourself, right? And just, you know, you know, come off it, right? <laughs> just, just snap out of it. Stop playing these games and just look at yourself and ask yourself, okay, what do I really want to do? Why am I not doing it in a serious, a tremendously serious way, right? You know, in reality, it's due to the fragmentation of our consciousness, right? If you ever see, if you, I'm sure that it's probably been in a lot of uh, TV or or films, um, movies. If you, when the person looks at the mirror and then the mirror starts talking back, right? What is happening there, right? It's a voice, another thing within you that is talking, okay? So this is what I mean by the fragmentation of our consciousness. In other words, you know, as I've been talking about here, it's to do with the multiplicity of the egos, you know? If you know the word or the saying legion or we are legion, that actually refers to the hundreds or even thousands of egoic psychological eyes or me's, right? Me, me, me as in plural. Um, And, you know, so one aspect of us wants us to do one thing and another wants us to do another. But what does humanity usually give more power to overall? The forces of good within us or the forces of bad? And when we give it to the forces of bad, things get worse. When we give it to the forces of good, things get a little bit better. But we need to transcend this whole duality within us, this conflict. So this is reflective of this dualistic and conflictive war that's within us and also manifested in outer human relationships, whether it's personal relationships with the relationships of Nick you know, nations or, or just, um, people, uh, here and there, right. To overcome this, one needs a tremendous level of self-inquiry to truly understand why they feel as they do and think as they do. So it takes meditation and willpower at first, and eventually you'll begin to give more force to the part of your conscience that says, do this, rather than the voice within that derives from self-pity or self-importance, right? So just a few things to meditate on. Uh, Again, I do recommend the, you know, if you're new to all this, I recommend the uh, book Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Because I understand, you know, I, a, a lot of people probably come to uh, the Astral Doorway YouTube uh, just interested in astral projection and these concepts uh, of psychological uh, transcendence uh, and working on the ego uh, may be new to you. So I understand. Okay. So JD also asks how do we find our life purpose? Uh, Like, what are we meant to do? Or what are we destined to do or learn here? Is there a purpose? Does everyone have the same one? The answer I gave to the previous question just then about knowing yourself is really the way to find your purpose. 
Or, in other words, that is the purpose, right? Because knowing yourself does not have a goal, does not have a destination. Knowing yourself is infinite, right? Just as the universe is infinite, we are infinite. The learning never stops. The purpose is to be on that path of learning. But often we are stuck or or find obstacles or trapped, uh, right? Or blocked by fears and, and, and all this other th- all these other things. So, you know, knowing yourself is the way to find your purpose. Why? Because those egoic voices and noises within us stop us from feeling and sensing what we're meant to do in this life, or at least sensing it, right? Uh, it's like when we grow up in society with no spiritual guidance, right? And young people grow up today saying, I want to do this or that. Um, Oh, but I want to do this instead, right? Society teaches us to just choose what we should do and never how we should choose and how we, uh, you know, understand wisdom to know how to choose it. And, you know, how we choose comes from connecting with ourselves and having active self-inquiry. You know, does everyone have the same purpose uh, as well? I believe in one sense, yes, we do. Uh, And that purpose is the awakening of consciousness, to wake up out of our own delusions. But at the same time, I believe everyone's purpose is completely unique due to everyone's extremely unique experiences, right? Everyone's experience is is extremely unique, you know? I, you know, I also believe all our souls, um, to speak a little less uh, objective now, or, or logically, you know, I believe all our souls have specific attunements to certain astral energetic aspects, you could say. Uh, for example, some may be more attuned and find joy in philosophy, others arts, uh, others science, um, Others doing, you know, just being happy in more simple jobs. Maybe their purpose is, you know, raising a family. I don't know. It's all about what brings you joy and service to others and keeping you happy rather than focusing on how much money uh, something can make you or being in a job where you resent it deeply, right? Of course, in more realistic, uh, practical terms, I think the best way to Uh, find out what you want to do is by putting yourself out there actively and doing whatever you can, right? And in time, uh, you'll find your passion. Uh, It's much better than just sitting around and thinking about it. Um, Yes, I hope that helps. Uh, Yes, uh, again, JD also asks, I heard many people say their astral projection journey started with them first being able to lucid dream. Do you think the ability to lucid dream is a prerequisite for AP or that it just helps to be able to do so? Uh, it is not a prerequisite, but it yes, it does help a lot. Uh, as I've said, I had hundreds of lucid dreams before I astral projected and I instantly knew the the profound uh, reality uh, and and tangibility and what it really was because I had so many lucid dreams before. This is why my ideas and understanding of the difference between lucid dreaming and astral projection is so clear in my in my mind. So, uh, you know. Understanding the difference uh, is essentially a prerequisite for really appreciating the out-of-body state. Uh, 
Uh, and actually, you don't need to focus on lucid dreaming that much uh, because lucid dreaming usually often occurs naturally when we practice astral projection. JD also asks, <laughs> um, how do you overcome addictions such as junk food, sugar, pornography, video games, uh, can a component of spirituality or mindfulness or meditation help? Yes, so, uh, you know, just to uh, pinpoint on uh, pornography, I am going to finally talk about um, sexual uh, transmutation or this aspect of sexual energy within ourselves, which is a really, really one of the most deepest parts that uh, we can practice. So yes, I will go into that much more in depth on, on a future video uh, very soon. Uh, but yes, to answer your question generally, uh, of course, you know, that, uh, you know, you asked, can a component of spiritual spirituality or mindfulness or meditation help? No, not a component. All of that, right? That precisely is how we overcome those things. Through the use of conscious awareness and efforts and reflection and intelligent understanding of our own internal psychology that we can connect to through meditation, when we begin to understand why we do the things we do, and in that understanding, we go beyond them. Okay, and, and I'm I'm pretty sure you know I've already given you some clues, uh, some some guideposts, you know, along the way in the in this talk uh, in the past hour, right? About this conflict, this inherent conflict within ourselves, and to find this union, this peace within us. Um, yes. Uh, Skywalker asks, do we have a life between lives that we can go back to after we pass from this life? Uh, is it possible that we are missing it? I'm not quite sure what you mean. What you mean? Uh, also, what is the most effective way to call for spiritual help from the physical world? Uh, is there a specific name or person we can call for help on? Does anyone in the astral actually give a damn about us? Life between lives, uh, you mean the, the afterlife, right? Uh, of course, it's, you know, the afterlife is the astral plane that we stay in for a while until, for whatever reason, we come back uh, into another physical body. The most effective way to call for help from the physical uh, is prayer, uh, right? It doesn't have to be a religious prayer where you go down on your knees and, and, and uh, bow and, and put your hands together. You know, prayer prayer can come in the heart, and it can come in it can come without words as well, right? And uh, in, in an emotional intelligence that is within you. So, you know, prayer is, you know, essentially about getting into a deep meditative state and connecting or talking to your innermost being, your central point of connection to your own consciousness. And through that, you may talk to your higher self or other positive beings uh, may pick it up from you if you intend to do so. Uh, for specific names, sure, you could, you know, if you do the research, there are many saints uh, and things and certain uh, energies that have certain names. Uh, if you meet a guide, you can perhaps ask for the name and then it may, may be, uh, you may be able to conduct a more stronger connection with them through uh, calling upon their name when you do ask for help. And yes, uh, does anyone in the astral actually give a damn about us? <laughs> you know, good question. I won't go in depth uh, 
since this video has run long now, but in short, yes, there are many teachers, guides, and masters all waiting for us to wake up and are at our assistance if we are really willing to listen and put in the work. Uh, they won't waste time on people who are lazy and can't look past their own ego. Most of them are actually quite harsh in nature and will not spend time feeling sorry for you or stroking your ego or, uh, what's the word, mommy coddling you, right? The primary purpose is about waking the hell up, right, right now and getting out of our delusions of reality. So, you know, you asked, do they actually give a damn about us? In a way, no, they don't if, if you don't give a damn, right? Uh, back to JD's questions. Uh, JD asks, do you think binaural beats are helpful in achieving astral projection? Uh, yes. If they work for you, then they work for you. If not, then it's not a problem. It's worth a try, right? We have to be like scientists trying different things. Uh, I've tried them before and had success, so you may have success too. Uh, I don't know many myself, you know, there's many on YouTube. I just randomly search them one time. Um, but, you know, the most famous ones, right? Um, and I think, are they the most original ones? Uh, try the Hemisync files, right? Uh, by the, the Gateway Experience. I'm pretty sure they're available for free on YouTube. I'm not sure. But if you do the digging, you will find them somewhere. Again, by JD, uh, I think uh, Doral, Dolores Cannon, uh, I don't know who that is, uh, mentioned once that through, although astral projection is possible, it's not something that we should strive to achieve because she argues we incarnated in this life on earth to learn uh, about the physical plane and about being human. An astral projection into the astral realm it's just a distraction from our material, physical, plain lessons we are meant to learn. <clears throat> yes, I somewhat agree. Of course, people can approach it in this way. Uh, what is your opinion on this? Uh, I heard it's possible to learn and receive wisdom in the astral too. So that's where I think the argument of being a distraction uh, may be a waste of time. So she's both right and wrong, I think. Um... You know, yes, as I said earlier, astral projection is not an end goal and does not mean some sort of learning stops there in the astral. You know, actually, that is where learning starts. And in other words, we can go to the astral plane where higher dimensions of consciousness exist and use the information there in order to bring back wisdom learning and intelligence back to the physical in order to learn about uh, the physical more profoundly. Astral projection is not a distraction unless the individual makes it so. As I always emphasize, the practice is about being present to physical reality in order, in order uh, so that we are also present to the astral reality at night too. As above, so below. Train your awareness to always be aware, no matter if you're in, in the physical or whether or when you're asleep, right? You know, the astral and the physical are intimately connected. And, you know, to say the astral plane has no significance to the physical plane is simply a mistake. Uh, that person has not understood, understood the nature and intelligence behind the fifth dimension. It's like saying, okay, in order to build a very tall building, we should only focus on building bricks upwards and just totally forget about building a strong foundation deep under it. Now, I don't know, you know who that person is who said that, uh, but I'm sure they have some wisdom and I, I'm sure there are many reasons why they would have said that. Uh, you know, but my advice is don't take everyone's word and explanations as black and white. These topics are far more complex than we realize, depending on the perspective that we're coming from or the perspective that the, that the person 
uh, said it from, right? And many of these teachings are, and these these profound realities of truth are embedded in paradoxes too. I'm sure many of you have uh, come across these as well in this way. So, yes, and you know, also remember, <laughs> consider if everyone in the world now woke up and understood and or believed and realized or knew that astral projection is real, we would live in a totally different world right now, wouldn't we? So I don't think it's something to ignore at all. You know, I do believe there is perhaps uh at some points um consciousness our consciousness can be developed to a point where we are you know ascended above the astral but you know there are uh, you know i've studied and read that even the most highest ascended masters uh sacrifice themselves uh sacrifice the the sublime realities of of the heavens right in order to descend, not fall, there's a difference, right? Uh, descent, falling is is falling down, right? Losing consciousness. Descend is uh, consciously, in, intentionally walking downwards. Uh, and I, I, you know, I believe these ascended masters voluntarily go down into the lower astral in order to help humanity who who is stuck. Uh, in the lower astral or, or, or even lower, right? And this is the true path, right? This is the the this is white magic, right? To choose uh, and to live and and to do these practices, right? I'm here, always practicing, and uh, I'm all in in the process. I want to help others as well. Uh, you know, this is this is um, a core aspect that we need to integrate in order to to not just help ourselves but help others too so yes i hope that helps uh yes you know great questions jd thank you for asking them uh, uh and another one by you uh does astral projection lead to spiritual development or does spiritual development lead to astral projection or both on either? Uh, can it be approached uh, scientifically? Uh, yes, both is the answer. Uh, they are one and the same. Uh, the latter is usually more common and more important. That tremendous and radical spiritual transformation naturally leads to astral projection because remember a non-spiritual person can have an obe and learn absolutely nothing so our developed practices are our foundation of learning and a sort of cultivated intent that we bring into these experiences and uh you know, just to add, I just want to make it clear because from some of the things that I've said, um, just because one astral projects does not mean they are enlightened. The spiritual path is so long and infinite that we can become we come to so many profound realizations in our life and, and grow spiritually without astral projecting. And then somewhere along the way, we we have when we're when we start to figure out all our issues, then we we discover astral projection and realize, oh my god, there is so much more to discover, right? So, yes, I just want to you know I think that understanding that uh, ash, you don't need to be enlightened in order to, in order to astral project. I think that's an important thing to realize and yes yeah, so you know you know and also the last part of your question uh, i'm not sure what you mean uh, about the, being scientific but uh, yes 
Astral projection should be approached scientifically, absolutely. As in objective, non-judgmental, uh, non-assuming, you know, taking mental notes and reflecting on things, right? Too many people go into astral projection uh, emotionally, right? We should be scientists completely, not being caught up in our emotions. If we see some kind of evil thing, uh, we shouldn't uh, you know, e realize that evil is just a mental concept and really look at it, right? Really questioning, is it a dream? Is it coming from my subconscious? Is this real or not? We should be asking these questions once we're out in the astral. Okay, and last question by JD, and that is the last question that was ever asked. Uh, if a blind person, uh, if a person who is blind or is, is blind since birth, uh, can they see in the astral? And similarly, if a person is physically crippled, um, will it affect the mobility of their astral body? Okay. I'm not sure. However, I have heard that people who were blind since birth have been able uh, to see in the astral. Quite interesting. Um, so, but perhaps just rumors, uh, who knows? Um, Maybe someone in the comments uh, knows uh, stories uh, or accounts about that. Uh, if you have any sort of physical disability, no, it should absolutely not affect anything. Uh, I suspect, at least anyway. Uh, have you ever heard of the phantom limb pain that people have if they lose a limb, right? Um, that's essentially the astral body's limb you know, still attached. And energetically, uh, you can't merge or have the satisfaction of, of having uh, the physical counterpart of, of that astral body. So the astral body is not a fixed thing or fixed appearance or shape. Uh, it's not physical. It is malleable and flexible. Um, I don't see any reason why it should affect uh, why it should be affected by being in a wheelchair or something. Okay, well, <laughs> how long has it been? It's been two hours almost. Um, well, we got through that, didn't we? Uh, thanks for all the great questions, everyone. I, I hope some of my answers on things helped you as I always, uh, hope so, right? That is always my intention. Um, if you want any clarification on any of the answers I gave, uh, please just ask below and I will get back to you. I don't know if I made complete sense in all of the questions. I just asked them and uh, I just answered them. And as you can tell, I'm a little bit tired right now. So hopefully those all made sense. Um, and I also have some very, very interesting and long awaited, uh, videos and information for you in the next few upcoming videos. So I really hope you all stay tuned and are subscribed, uh, put the bell button on. So, you know, when I upload a new video and yes, I will get back to you if you leave questions. Uh, I occasionally, you know, come and check back throughout the week. Uh, if you want more opportunities to ask me questions in a more interactive and intimate way, then consider joining the Astral Doorway uh, Discord group, which is as accessed through the Patreon, where we have regular live Q&A and other types of events. So thank you everyone, and I will see you on the next episode.